Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spoked Wheel YouTube channel. Today we are back with episode 7 of the Andy Schleck Pro Cyclist Mode uh, series that we're doing. Um, and today we're going to have the first two episodes of the Circuit de Ardennes Internationale. If you missed episode 6, make sure you go back and watch it before watching this one because at the end of that video we sort of detailed uh, this race and looked into the results that Andy Schleck got there in his first pro season in his real life career. Um, long story short, he finished 7th on GC in this race, so that's sort of our target benchmark, I guess, um, just in terms of what we're hoping to achieve at this race in the game. Um, I don't really know what sort of teams are going to be at this race. It's a 2.2, so it's one of the lower lower ranked races. Um, so hopefully that means that it will be pretty much all continental teams and we'll have a chance to ride for the GC. Um, but we will find out once we get into the racing. And that's really all we have to do before the racing. So we're just going to get straight into it. Like I said, probably going to play these first two stages today and then the next episode will be the second two. Um, this first stage kind of flat, just I think going to be about getting to the finish without losing time. And then we'll see how the, the GC starts to take shape on this stage two that's a little bit hillier. Okay, so we're into stage one of the Circuit d'Ardennes. And as we expected, our team has us as the leader. Um, they want us to finish in the top three of the overall GC, which I think is going to be pretty tough on today's stage. I would anticipate it being a sprint finish, um, which means we probably don't have a very good chance of doing that, but we will try nonetheless. Um, we have almost every other rider on our team at our disposal as a teammate, so that's nice, although on today's stage not super important um, because like I said I think it will kind of be decided by a sprint in the end um, and just looking at the teams that are here it's almost all continental teams there's a couple different uh, French pro Conti teams um, so nobody from the world tour is here um, nothing like that so we're, we're not gonna switch focus and try and get the KOM jersey like we did at that other race earlier on. We're going to ride for the GC this time, and if all goes according to plan, I think this is a... the race has a profile that could suit us nicely. I mean, primarily, of course, we are a climber with that 76 mountain rating, but our hill rating isn't bad right now at 74. That's pretty strong for a continental rider, so... I think we have a chance of getting a decent GC result, um, especially considering that the competition isn't overly stiff at this point. Okay, so sort of a 50 kilometers to go, roughly update. We got this breakaway of two still off the front, Johnny Brown and Paul LaPiera. They picked up most of the KOM points, I think they're tied at 64 points apiece. Um, the race split up a little bit over these climbs, but by the end it had mostly come back together, so 99 riders in the peloton. Uh, I would guess it will indeed be a sprint finish. I think Pim Ligtart would be a pretty good bet to win this stage um, for direct energy, but we will see. I think it uh, looks like it's all going to come back together, or finish all relatively together, so chances are we're not going to finish in the top three on GC after today, but we will see. We'll do our best. All right, so we're inside of 10 kilometers to go at this point. Total direct energy basically came to the front and caught the breakaway and are doing their sprint lead out. At this point, I'm just sort of trying to follow wheels. Um, like we said at the start, our team wants us to finish in the top three on GC, but that's just not going to happen against some of these sprinters who are here, so 
we're just going to try and follow some of the sprinters and just finish as high up as we can. Um, but the real GC action will take place in the following three stages rather than on this opening one. Um, but you can see the trains are sort of, sort of opening things up. inside of a kilometer to go and yeah just no chance to get top three Reggie wins the stage uh, probably get a top 10 here though there we go 10th place um, one ahead of our teammate Patrick Haller who was protecting us for most of the stage um, yeah so that's I mean we didn't didn't get top three like our team wanted, but I'm very happy with that 10th place for basically a sprint finish that's very solid and kind of gives us a leg up going into the hillier stages um, where the GC will really be decided. There we go, yeah, on GC we are 11th because of bonus seconds and whatnot. They weren't happy, but like I said, it's just not a not a realistic goal to try and get us to finish third on that type of stage. All right, so we're now into stage two of the Circuit d'Ardennes. Um, we were not listed amongst the favorites on this stage. Um, in the pre-race screen but as you can see there's a whole lot more climbing um, I would expect this race to split up a, a ton and some real changes in the GC to occur so once again our team wants us to finish in the top three of the GC this time they also want us to finish in the top three of the stage um, unfortunately we have a pretty negative race day condition of minus three um, so it is only minus one to our hill rating, but that's still rather unfortunate. It's gonna make things hard. I'm not too sure if we'll be able to hit those top three goals that they set for us. Um, but I would expect that there might be a small group of riders who go to the finish together, but I would expect that that cat two climb could be a decisive launching pad. So the situation is right we will definitely try and attack on that climb and see if we can't do something good and win the stage um, but also we're I'm curious to see how things will stand after uh, this cat that cat one climb there just before the sprint point because I think the race will likely split up a bunch by that point as well so um, yeah unfortunate that our race day condition is so negative but we will still try our best to maybe not finish in the top three, but try and finish with the leaders and continue building our case for the general classification. All right, so we're up over the top of that cat one climb that I talked about at the beginning. Um, and the race really hasn't split up at all. There's still 117 riders in the peloton, breakaway of four with three minutes 40 seconds roughly um, you know the terrain is one thing but if there aren't teams riding on the front to make it hard then everything's gonna stay together so it looks like Arkea is starting to pick up the pace um, a couple other teams as well uh, to bring the breakaway back um, but yeah, I guess the peloton's down. Yeah, it's there's little groups that are forming, but then things come back together. That's sort of been the trend. Um, so it, it is going to come down to these last two climbs here. Uh, I'm going to have to say, I think, very attentive for attacks. Um, although if the breakaway is still out in front, I think teams will be riding hard to bring that down, bring that gap down. So I'll just try and stay up at the front and stay in a good position. Um, and yeah, hopefully get to this last cat two climb with the enough energy to try and do something. All right, so we're heading towards this 
final ascent of this little Cat 2 climb. Um, the gap to the breakaway is only 30 seconds. They seem to be pretty much out of energy. There's also a lot of very tired riders in the peloton, um, so the pace isn't actually too high right now. Um, my heart rate is a nice comfortable 130, or it was, it's gone up a little bit now. But uh, there's definitely a chance here to, to try and attack um, and get a gap on this Cat 2 climb. Uh, yeah, you can see that basically all the domestiques who have been working on the front are pretty much out of energy, so that would suggest that there's not really anyone to chase if a move does happen. Um, so I'm just trying to stay cl as close to the front as possible on the off chance that someone does attack. Um, I want to be in a good position, and then hopefully we can attack on that cat to climb and use it as a launching pad. Um, I'm using my last teammate here, Rakita, who has done a pretty nice job of protecting uh, me throughout the stage. Um, and now we're on this climb, so let's uh, let's go for it. There's a few riders following the move as I get blocked by the breakaway a little bit. Um, so inside of 10 kilometers, that did not really do as much damage as I would have hoped. There's a group of 21 riders now. And that's a move that I don't want to let go. So I'd say the attack did damage and split things up, but didn't really do anything in terms of winning the stage. Uh, group of four, and then we're in a group of 11 here. I have basically no energy whatsoever. Uh, this would be a perfect time to try and attack and see if you can get a gap, but like I said, don't have any energy. Um, so yeah, that's too bad. I wonder if things would have been would have worked out differently uh, if we weren't on a minus three day, but gotta work with what you have, so. Total direct energy is kind of lining things up here. I'm not sure who they're actually sprinting for. There goes Avia. And Edwin Avia takes the stage ahead of Pim Lictart. Um, so we will get in the top 35, and we shouldn't lose any time, but 27th. Yeah, okay. Um, so our team's not going to be happy with that because we didn't succeed in terms of the GC or the stage. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else we could have done there. Um, if we didn't get that gap on the, the last climb, there wasn't really a chance to attack anywhere else because of the lack of energy. So it is what it is. There are still two big stages left in this race to try and turn things around and get a result. Um, let's see where we are on the general classification now after two stages. Alright, so we dropped down to 14th, um, didn't lose any time on the road, it was just uh, bonus seconds that did the trick. Um, so Edwin Avila is now leading the overall race, 4 seconds ahead of Pim Lictart, and Benjamin de Klerk rounds off the podium. Um, and we are equal on time with the rider in eighth place right now. So the 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 potential for us to move up significantly is there. Um, we're equal on time with eighth and only ten seconds back of the leader. Uh, but yeah, like I said, they weren't particularly happy with that. That's all right. Um, so 
that's going to be the two two races for today's episode, episode seven, and then episode eight, we will be back with these last two stages. So let's just take another look at them. Um, so stage three, really short, only 79 kilometers. Um, the climbs don't look all that steep, but uh, that's sort of because the stage is only 79 kilometers long. So even here at the finish, it looks like uh, it gets pretty steep, max 7% gradient right up to the line. So that will be an exciting finish. Um, and then stage four, kind of a bit of a flat one. So I think if we're going to move up, we're going to have to have a good day on stage three. Uh, there are a lot of climbs in this race, but they're kind of spaced out and early on in the in the stages, so there's not really a ton of opportunity for the race to split up a bunch and create big time gaps like you would in a mountain stage. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I think we're still in with a chance of replicating Andy's seventh place on GC, um, but I think a lot of it is going to come down to stage three. So. Make sure you you stay tuned in for that next episode because that's going to be a big one. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, give a thumbs up, uh, and as always, if there's anything that you think I could do better or if you have any suggestions for future videos or things I could change, feel free to let me know in the comments section. Um, this playthrough I think is progressing pretty nicely. Um, we're starting to get into the races that suit us a bit more. Um, I'm looking forward to this one a lot, the classic Alps Maritime. Um, that's a ton of climbing. That's where we'll be in our element, so I'm looking forward to getting into races like that. And I think that's pretty much it for today, so thank you for watching. Um, I'll be back again soon with episode eight and then also make sure you also keep an eye out for um the next couple episodes of the 2020 Giro Rosa series that we're doing so thanks again for watching i'll see you next time